My name is David Benson. My name is Gavin Elder. And you're watching Seabird Media. Media. David, let's talk a bit about uh, Glyphy and Drawing. Not that I specifically want to have all these comparisons, but um, it's an obvious question for customers. A lot of people use Glyphy today for their conference and geo licenses mm -hmm. or instances, and uh, they'll ask me why draw IO diagramming now and not Glyphy diagramming as I used to know it. Sure. So I think there's a number of key points here. One, the first point, is we're half the price of Glyphy. And it's simply a case of it's a better value plugin at the price point. The second thing is we, we have a lot of experience of supporting enterprises. For example, we support Internet Explorer 8, and you can't get that support with Glyphy. Um, uh, and also, we have much longer end-of-life policies than, than the likes of, of Glyphy. Um, we have touch device support. Um, specifically to Jira, um, the, the Glyphy plugin is still in Flash, which is ultimately an out-of-date technology. Um, we, we use the most modern browser technologies and techniques in, in Jira as we do with Confluence. The Confluence, uh, the, the Jira plugin is not a second-class citizen in, in our case. Okay. Um, as we market ourselves, and I, I'm pretty inclined to keep this uh, notion as um, advisors of our customers um, uh, who now help you um, in sales and marketing, I would still be inclined to help them decide themselves for Glyphy if this is the better choice. So um, let me try to give you some reasons why not to take Draw.io, and maybe we can uh, talk about this. So if I look at the integration of Confluence and uh, Glyphy, there is a situation where when I create a new diagram, they, they open up a template uh, altogether, um, and it's, it's an easy flow of creating a new diagram, and with Draw.io, it's more cumbersome. Yeah. Is that something you're aware of? It's Absolutely. Um, I mean, we've talked to a lot of our users. Um, we, we do solicit feedback actively. Um, they brought out several points that is one of the points they've brought up. There's a number of other points. For example, they want improvements to the Visio import. Um, they'd like us to be able to import from Glyphy. So you have a Visio import? We have, we have a Visio import. Um, Visio import is a very large format. There's always improvements to be made, mm -hmm. but uh, basically every time a customer comes to us and says, here is a diagram I tried to import from Visio, it failed. Obviously, we go and work out why, why it failed, fix the problems, and... So if I have a simple flowgram, uh, a flowchart diagram, I... I would be able to import that. That, that, that will work. Yeah, and, yeah. and the majority of users either can import as is or they can make small changes to their diagrams. But obviously the, the fundamental aim is 100% of diagrams import without the user having to perform manual, manual changes. And that's very high on the priority list. There's a lot of features that you have actually. So it may only be my impression, but you, I think for every Glyphy feature that I saw, I saw two dry uh, features. Is that something that you could reflect or is just do you only have so many buttons that I thought yeah I mean, I mean it's a good and a bad thing and one of the key things is to expose the, the features that users need in the user interface in a contextual way to show them when the user needs them and to hide the rest of the information because you can you can give the user information overload just show them everything on the screen and that's something we're working actively on to make sure that we only show the contextual information that the user needs if I'm looking at these to two software programs mm -hmm. From a customer point of view, or I, I can only try to do that, but um, it's basically the same, right? You, I can do I have the similar shapes, I have similar features. It's uh, I, I only want this. Uh, it's with with Word. You most people only use a fraction of what Word can do, and they only want to do a text. And with the diagramming tool, a lot of our customers only want to add some process diagrams to their quality management handbook or something. And uh, you can do that with Draw.io just as well as you can do with Cliffy. So wh yeah. where's the difference? I mean, to an extent that's true, but you always find that when a user progresses and uses the tool more and more, they mm -hmm. do come to appreciate the details, the nuances, if you like, that you put into making sure that every part of the experience helps the user. And there's a key feature in addition we have in Draw.io that, that isn't present in Cliffy, and that is the concept of plugins within Draw.io. Mm -hmm. So it is possible to customize any part of the user interface. Um, it is performed programmatically, so it's something that um, 
users would have to go via Seabird Media to, to inquire about. Um, and, and in that way, they can take, for example, a, a quality management um, department, and they're not interested in all the other things that the tool does apart from quality management. So they want specific um, uh, shapes, stencils, and they want specific behavior on the drawing area that lends itself to working just in that particular domain. And it's possible to customize Droyo in any way. You as a custom, uh, as a, a company, JGraph, you've been in business for quite a long time. Since when was that? Um, 2000, uh, we've originally been in business. And the, the core of what you see in Droyo, we started to develop in 2005. Okay. When did Cliffy start? Do you know that? Cliffy, I, I seem to recall the first public beta was 2006. Yeah, okay. And um, when I recall that from our conversation correctly, you've, uh, in 2005, you've Directly started with HTML5, correct? Well, with HTML4 at the time. Yeah, okay. Because mm -hmm. HTML5 didn't and exist. And HTML version. But, I mean, we, yeah, we have yeah. worked natively within the browser. We've never used Flash. So it's yeah. always been a zero. Yeah, that's where I wanted to go. To, piece yeah. of technology, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, how come, as such an experienced company in online diagramming, you're such a new B at the Atlas Media System? Originally, we dealt just with licensing the technology to other development firms. We didn't create an application until much what you now call cloud computing took off. So we weren't so much in, interested in user management, in account management, in infrastructure management. So the example that you can see online at draw.io is run on Google App Engine. And that deals entirely with our scaling, entirely with our availability. And in 2013, we had 100% availability Every single minute for the entire year, the application was available. So, you know, these sorts of tools now allow us to very quickly and easily create things that previously we would have needed additional staff to create. Yeah, okay. So, um, from a customer standpoint, let me try to wrap this up. Um, Glyphy and Dryo both offer me this basic diagramming features that I need. Um, obviously, uh, Dryo has a uh, longer history and experience of doing things. That's just what, what my impression is. Um, uh, you've been working longer with this HTML native technology um, there. Um, on the other hand, um, uh, Glyphy is kind of, um, let's call it um, the, the king of it all is Atlassian. Mm -hmm. And they have actually endorsed Glyphy a lot. Here. So Glyphy is on the market. Uh, on, uh, if you create an on-demand uh, instance of Confluence, you can directly checkbox uh, Glyphy. No, almost no other plugin mm -hmm. uh, can do that. They're heavily integrated sure. into the Atlassian process already. So um, isn't that a sign that I should just go for that? Because Atlassian obviously thinks that this is uh, the way to go. I think, I think users are, are more intelligent than that. I think users do like to, 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 once they're made available, they can see what tools are available to them. I think they like to make an informed decision. So um, obviously I'd suggest to pick uh, both Dryo and Glyphy to evaluate and evaluate them in an unbiased way. Mm -hmm. and, and in essence think for, for the extra doubling of the price, do you want to pay for that uh, additional endorsement, or does the tool, does Droyo do its job? And think about that rationally. Okay. Uh, and basically, from a technology standpoint, if I look at the plugins, both are those jar files that I injected yeah. to my Confluence run as a plugin, and they can do or can't do whatever the product can do, but it's not that kind of um, Glyphy is really part of the Confluence product. No, no, no. So, so we integrate in exactly the same way as, uh, as for Glyphy. There's no, there's no additional security advantages to using Glyphy. And as I'm from Germany, um, I can store your things on my Confluence. There's no connection to any cloud service that Abs we have. Right? Absolutely not. Yeah, okay. That's not something we strictly follow. Um, do I have to upgrade my Confluence to a certain version to be able to use Dryo or...? Um, we, we follow currently the, the same end-of-life uh, policies that Atlassian uh, apply for Confluence and Jira, and I think at the moment it's Confluence 4.1 and Jira 5.0, mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the general policy is we, we follow that end-of-life uh, arrangement. I mean, obviously, if, if users did want that extended past Atlassian's uh, policy, more than happy to accommodate that. Yeah, and uh, so if I have a Confluence 3.5, uh, I can use Dryo right now? Confluence 3.5, no. But okay. you would also be out of life, end of life on Atlassian's uh, policies. Yeah, right? awesome. Uh, thanks for this open uh, comparison.